back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Brooke and I have two daughters. I just had my second 11 days ago. Honestly, don't know how it's already been 11 days. I do have a birth vlog like in the hospital and all that, but I wanted to do a birth story time just because I didn't really explain the whole labor and delivery since it happened at my house and I didn't really record all of it. With my first, I also did a story time on the labor and delivery. So I thought might as well do another one with this baby so I can actually tell you guys like everything leading up to the point of my labor and then my delivery and my whole experience with that especially since this is my second and I was unmedicated this time with my first I had epidural thank god I did because I barely survived this time but yeah let's get into it so everything started on November 20th I had a really chill day I actually didn't wake up on the 20th until like 11 like I was literally just laying in bed I feel like my body knew that I was like going into labor soon because it needed to rest so i was in bed until 11 or 12 i don't even remember i didn't want to get ready but my boyfriend was like let's go to the mall and get our daughter some stuff for christmas like do some clothes shopping right before so i was like all right i finally decided to get ready and then we go shopping at like 5 p.m or something so we go shopping it's five o'clock i'm walking around i'm like i'm having so much pelvic pressure right now and my whole pregnancy i had a lot of pelvic pain so the baby was really really low inside of me which like made it hard for me to walk i could barely get out of bed getting out of the car my lower back hurts so bad all the time so i had a lot of pain and pressure the doctor even said to me like three days before i give birth she's really low you should probably pack your hospital bag which i did that day thank god i did because <laughs> i probably would have waited like another week and it would have not been prepared at all to go to the hospital like i was saying go to the mall i'm walking around i'm saying i have so much pelvic pain like it hurts my toddler was literally being crazy in the mall she was running around hiding under her clothes i was like i literally do not have time for this we were at the mall for probably like an hour and i was saying to my boyfriend i just i just want to leave my head hurt I didn't feel good. I barely even ate that day. So we get home. I'm like, I'm laying in bed. I'm so tired right now. I lay in bed probably till eight o'clock and I text my boyfriend to give me some ice cream. So he gets me ice cream and I start like having crampy feelings, but it wasn't like anything unusual because I was having Braxton Hicks a lot, which they were really crampy for me. So I was like, I'm having Braxton Hicks. I'm perfectly fine. And it wasn't like, it wasn't a contraction feeling. So I was just like, I'm literally fine. And then it's 11, so fast forward, our daughter falls asleep. We're just, my boyfriend and I are just chilling, you know, doing whatever you do. And it's like 11.30, I think. And I start actually having like contractions. And I say to him, I was like, I've been having cramps and like weird feelings, but not contractions. And now I'm like having a contraction. So I say to my boyfriend, if these contractions last like, two three hours i'm probably gonna call my mom and go to the hospital and he was like okay do you actually think you're gonna have to go to the hospital and i was like i don't know like i don't understand why i would be in labor this early because it was 17 days before my due date but i was also drinking the red raspberry leaf tea i think that's what it's called that's supposed to like help your uterus contract faster or something i also did one of those videos on youtube that says like preparing your body for labor I don't remember what it was called. I think it's called like the Miles Circuit or something. I think I did that the night before the, yeah. Either the night before or the night before that. Like it was like right around there. So I don't know if that also did something that like made my body like be like, okay, like let's get everything going. But I definitely didn't think I was gonna go in my route that early. So I was like, I don't know if I'm actually gonna go to the hospital. Then I start timing my contractions i think it was like around 12 or so and they were lasting exactly like 25 to 30 seconds every three minutes that was going on for about an hour or so, so i call my mom and she's sleeping she has work the next day but i call her i'm like i think i have to go to the hospital and she's like why do you want to go to the hospital like i had she told me she had a feeling because i kept telling her i had like these like cramping pains i didn't know what it was she's like i had a feeling you were gonna call me so i tell her i had to go to the hospital i was telling her about my contractions and she's like okay so she goes to get my brother who was gonna stay at my house while my toddler was sleeping because it was like 1 a.m and while she's coming here i call the hospital i talked to a midwife even though i had like a regular OBGYN, and i talked to a midwife and she said to me to wait until they're like five minutes for 
it's like the 155, the 501. I don't really know what it's called, but it's like some kind of rule that they say. Anyways, so then my mom finally gets here around 2 a.m. My mom does live about an hour away. So she finally gets here at 2 a.m. And I'm like, yeah, now there are one minute contractions every like three to four minutes. So they were getting like longer, but still kind of far apart. And I think they say go to the hospital when it's like one minute every five minutes for an hour. That's what it is. 511 or 115. I don't freaking know, but it's like the rule they have. My mom gets here. It's 2 a.m. The hospital is 18 minutes away. And right when she gets here, basically, she comes to my room. I'm laying down next to my toddler and something pops inside of me and I could feel it popping inside of me and I could hear it. Nobody else heard it. My mom and my boyfriend were like, I didn't hear it, but I could hear it. And maybe it was just like, maybe because it was my body or something, but I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not moving. And they were like, why, what's wrong, what's wrong? I said, I'm not moving right now because I know my water just broke. And they're like, we gotta go to the hospital right now. Keep in mind, while I'm in labor, I'm literally going around. I was cleaning. I literally did the dishes. I wiped on my counters. I was vacuuming the living room. Like I was going around cleaning everything. So I was like, I'm not going to labor right now. I'm having a baby and coming home to my house being a mess. After they're like, okay, we gotta go. We get all our bags. We go. Oh my gosh. My boyfriend and I go in my car. My mom goes in her car. My brother, okay, my toddler's fine. Like, she'll be sleeping, whatever. So we go to the hospital. The whole car ride right there, I kid you not, my boyfriend was hitting like every single pothole that there was. And it was making my contractions so much worse because you're like going up and down. It was literally so bad. And they were getting so intense and strong. And with my first, I got an epidural when I was only five centimeters. So I didn't experience anything above that. And I was like, why is it hurting so bad? Like, there's no way that I'm, like, about to give birth. Because I also have my water break with her, naturally. And I didn't give birth until five hours later. So I was thinking, okay, I like I literally have, like, a few hours. Like, I'm fine. So we get in the parking garage. And we start walking down there. I have to stop walking at one point because I'm like, I literally cannot walk right now. It hurts so bad. I was also getting a lot, a lot of pressure. Which I say, when there's, like, a lot of pressure, it's, like, almost time to push. So I was freaking out. We get in the hospital and I'm having attractions. Some lady's talking to me and I'm like, I literally cannot talk to you right now because like, I'm literally in pain dying. Get in a wheelchair. They wheel me right up to labor and delivery. I get in the room and my boyfriend tries to record on my camera. I told him to and I was like, just shut it off. Like I literally can't. I'm in so much pain right now. So that's like another reason why I don't have so much footage of my labor. I was just in so much pain. My camera died. But we're back. We're in the labor and delivery room and the nurse comes in and she's like, okay, I have to get this gown on, whatever. So I put the gown on and go in the bathroom and I'm like struggling to put it on. It hurts so bad. I'm in the bathroom. Like I literally almost started crying because of how much pain I was in from the contraction. Once I get the gown on and they're like, okay, you got to get on the bed. So I get on the bed and they're talking to me and they're being so nice. Like I seriously had the nicest labor and delivery nurses. But they're talking to me, they're like, you're okay, like, you need to breathe, you're fine. And I'm, at this point, I was honestly, like, begging them to get me the epidural. I said I need the epidural probably, like, 20 times. I also, I said a bunch of things <laughs> when I was in labor. I was like, I literally can't. They're talking to me, they're telling me you need to breathe. I'm like, I'm literally trying to breathe. The midwife comes in, she's like, okay, we're gonna check you. I was at an eight, and then... Five minutes later i was out of 10 so i was like okay well now i know i'm not gonna get the epidural my mom and my boyfriend were telling me like you're okay it's fine i have a bunch of pictures and videos of me actually in labor which i'm not gonna show anyone just because i look so like i don't even know how i look like distraught i look stressed out <laughs> the doctor on call from like my OBGYN, he like wasn't there he had to get to the hospital so i was telling them like I need to, I felt like I had to push the baby. So I said, well, I need to push the baby out. So they're like, okay. And I started pushing. My mom said that she thinks I pushed for like two minutes. And with my pushes, I did like, some people do a push and they stop and a push and stop and a push and stop. I did like a push and hold. So like, I was almost holding my breath, which I know they say like, you shouldn't hold your breath. But I was like, I don't care. I need the baby out right now. So I did a push and hold where I just was like, holding my breath and pushing the whole time so i probably did like five pushes total in a span of like two minutes 
but I was extremely dehydrated. They were telling me that I couldn't drink anything like while I was in labor because in case you have to have a C-section, you can't eat or drink. But when I was actually pushing her out, I was like, I need to drink right now. And as soon as she came out, I was literally chugging a water because I was so dehydrated from the whole experience. Like we literally got to the hospital and 20 minutes later I gave birth. So it was like so fast, so like, it was insane how fast that went. Experience, honestly, I would say 110% giving birth without medicine is obviously worse than with medicine because now I've experienced both um when I had epidural I couldn't experience obviously contractions I had no pressure nothing like I literally did not feel a thing and I just pushed out the baby this time obviously I experienced the full contractions full pressure pushing out the baby which I honestly would say that the contractions and pressure for me was worse than pushing her out but i don't know if that's because like i know a lot of people say you get the ring of fire i didn't experience that i don't know if it was because she came out like fast or like because she wasn't so big i don't really know like how that works once she was out it was literally instant relief like everyone says and they put her on me and i was like okay now i'm perfectly fine and then they started stitching me and like once i'm actually getting stitched up the doctor comes in and he was like oh <laughs> We were like, you missed the whole entire thing. <laughs> For my next, I honestly think that I would go to the hospital sooner. Um, I would tell them my experience the first time and be like, I need to go to the hospital right now because me waiting like an hour after she said that, she said I should wait longer and I regret waiting longer because obviously I couldn't get the epidural, which was like in my plans to get. I literally said to my boyfriend, like my whole pregnancy, if I get to the hospital and I'm at like, an eight and i can't get it i don't know what i'm gonna do and that was exactly what happened that was a pretty positive experience because it like went super fast but definitely also the downside was because i didn't do the plan i wanted of getting the medication but i was fine in the long run definitely would not do it again but i also don't know because i'm scared because i had this baby at 37 weeks and five days without being induced so i don't even know when my next would come like now i'm like confused and scared but then, you know, after you give birth, you have to go to the bathroom and they go in with you and they tell you like how to set up everything postpartum. If you haven't had a baby, basically what they do is they give you like these mesh underwear, which I actually really like. And they give you a huge pad, like it's seriously humongous. Like it's literally like a foot long and it's like super wide. And then you get an ice pack, you get these little like cotton round thingies that um, are like soaked with witch hazel and like cooling agents, all this stuff. You put it on the ice pack and then you get dermaplast and you spray it or you can spray it on yourself. And then you pull it all up and that's like what you do for like a vaginal delivery. I don't know if you do it for a C-section because you don't have like tearing or like it's sore. I don't know how that works. I'll have to look that up. <laughs> but I know with the C-section you do still have bleeding. I just don't really know like how the pain is down there. And then they bring you to the postpartum unit and in that it's like way bigger you have like obviously the baby little bassinet thing and all that and then usually they come in every i think it was like every hour or two and they have to push on your stomach and it really really hurt me oh it did not hurt me the first time but they push your stomach and i i don't know i feel like they were like pushing on it really hard and basically it's just trying to get like your uterus like back and also just like get out any blood and like massage it and make sure you're not going to hemorrhage or anything like that. Which I they did tell me that I had like a clot by my uterus where it was. With like by my placenta or something. So they were like massaging it. Maybe that's why they were doing it a little bit hard. And you also can get like medicine for that. They give me Tylenol. It helps with pain. Um, while you're breastfeeding, if you do breastfeed, I know it hurts worse when you have like cramps of it. Your uterus going back to normal. So I breastfeed in the hospital. Oh my gosh. It felt like I was having contractions and it hurt so bad at some points. Overall, I had a pretty good experience besides not being able to get medication. I had a first degree tear with her. With my first, I had a second degree tear. I don't really know like how much more tearing that is. Um, not a doctor, I have no idea. But obviously like a first is better than a second. You are trying to have like some kind of natural induction method i would definitely suggest doing the mild circuit thing that i did because i swear that probably put me into some kind of labor because it does really get the baby like down low in position everyone says that like that works 
but I also heard you have to do it like a few times. I only did it once, so I don't know. It could just be a coincidence. It could not be. Same with the red raspberry leaf tea. I think that definitely, definitely helps. Like people say, it does like get your uterus to contract faster, and then it also can help with like cramping and everything and getting your uterus back to normal after birth. So. I would definitely recommend those things. We post two times a week and I'm going to be doing a post and Q&A. You guys can leave some questions down below here. Or I'm also going to do a little community tab post of asking me questions. That'll probably be my next video. I'll see you guys in the next video.